One, two, one, two. One, two, testing audio. One, two, testing Hey y'all, Irix guy here. Welcome back to another live stream. Now this is a new uh, new format that I'm going to work on. I'm up here in the mountains and uh, got a bunch of raccoons. So basically what I'm going to do, George Cooney, the raccoon, uh, he's become quite an internet celebrity already. And we're going to, uh, hey George Cooney. Yeah, he, he should he should be joining us here in a few minutes. So uh, this camera that I'm filming this live stream with, it is very mobile. So what we're going to do is uh, as soon as I get the, uh, as soon as I get George Cooney's dinner, George Cooney, the raccoon, we're going to relocate the camera and you will get to see up close George Cooney, the raccoon. You can ask questions and uh, I'll shout down to, Hey man, you know, do you know how to answer that? And he'll be like, yeah, or no. Um, <laughs> Man, I got a bug in my beard, dude. Ugh. Ugh. In, in case you're wondering what I'm drinking, I got the uh, Trellis Buster. It's from the Crooked Stave in Colorado. It's a hazy double IPA. And it says, Crooked Stave Trellis Buster, double India Pell Ale, brewed with brew-i, Sabro and Sultana. Sultana. Oh, yeah. Hmm. See some people tuning in here. Let's see what we got going on here. Uh, let's see. Yep. Should shouldn't be uh, shouldn't be too long. And and as a reminder, this is a uh, live a live show. So if you want to super chat, feel free to do so. It's a great way to support the channel. Again, not part of a multi channel network. Independent YouTube channel, always have been, always will be. So appreciate y'all's support. Okay, so this thing is it's pretty cool. I'm streaming. Uh, typically, I stream with the uh, with the A10 Mini Pro. I like the A10 Mini Pro a lot. But with this, I just did a, I did a basic capture card, uh, something I want to do is run a fiber optic HDMI cable. You know, fiber optic HDMI can go a little bit longer distance. And I want to run a fiber optic HDMI cable so that I can tie in my studio's ATEM Mini Pro and simply just plug in a, uh, you know, have a fiber optic HDMI cable that I can roll out and connect. But yeah, right now I'm tethered directly to the laptop uh, using a capture card over a USB-C. USB-C is in Charlie. Hmm. This beer's got a lot of head on it. It's because I've forgotten how to pour, man. I don't, I don't drink that much beer. I just, I got this because it was on sale. They had a, a six pack for like $4 US. I'm like, heck yeah. Hmm. Can't beat a discount. And this is not discounted beer. I mean, well, I got it for a discount, but it's high quality beer. Colorado has some amazing breweries, some amazing microbreweries. If you've ever been to Colorado, it's an awesome place. I'm in the Appalachian Mountains right now, but yeah, the Rockies, completely different, man. Different, uh, different appearance, different animals. You get some grizzly bears out there, man. Those things will come and, and eat you alive. Um, you've got moose. You look at a moose, you're like, man, a moose isn't that scary of an animal. Actually, a moose can be more deadly than a grizzly bear. So, you know, if you're out there in the if you're out there in the Rockies, man, I wouldn't go too far without at least a, uh, you know, some sort of magnum. I, I think I would probably carry a Glock uh, 10 millimeter, which a lot of people are like, man, is that, you know, you probably need more something more like a Casul or something along those lines. It's in a revolver format. I like I like my semi-automatic Glocks. So a 10 millimeter is about the best you're going to get for uh, for big game defense. And it's questionable. 
again, a lot of people aren't. Hmm. I got some comments coming in here. We got Garrick SL. Uh, Garrick SL says, George is the kindest male raccoon. Yeah, yeah, man. He's, he's pretty cool. Now, when we feed George Cooney here in a minute, you're probably going to see some other raccoons. I'm going to see if I can tune into this from my phone, too. Um, you're probably going to see some other raccoons and they, their personalities aren't that great. You know, it's like they're, they've got, they're irritated for some reason, but yeah, George Cooney's pretty cool, but there's one, if you see him and I don't know what his name is, but he's got this big Brown spot on his back and he's probably about two or three times the size of George Cooney. And keep in mind, George Cooney's a big raccoon, but this other one that doesn't have a name yet. I mean, he's, he's, uh, he is enormous. And he does, he's not a nice, he's not a nice raccoon. I mean, maybe he's just irritated about something, but I mean, George Cooney's nice. This other raccoon's not, not too nice. Uh, let's see. We've got, I wish I could figure out how to, because see, I'm streaming from my laptop over there and I can walk over and read y'all's comments. No problem. Actually, I guess what I ought to do is just move the laptop over there. That's what I'll do. Okay, yeah, I'm going to move this laptop over here. No, I got to go under my HDMI cable. H. Now, I've got longer HDMI cables, but this one's of appropriate length. Yeah, actually, you know what? Dude, this works. Whoa, man, that's pretty cool. No, that does work. Wow. And see, I set this chair up for later, so when I when I do the uh, when we get George Cooney, we start feeding him. I got this chair for the laptop. This works. Now I wouldn't want my laptop to go off the mountain, but yeah, that's that's, that's pretty pretty cool, man. Let's see. Actually, let me turn it. This is, and I apologize, this is a work in progress, y'all. And okay, let's see, we got a comment from Jared Diamond. It says, better have the foam on top of your beer than in your gut. Yeah, man. <laughs> see, I'm, uh, actually, that, that's something I'm working on is the uh, the fitness routine. Part of it, though, is just eating whatever I want to eat and, uh, you know, drinking whatever I want to drink. So, you know, if you eat and drink a lot, it, it's it's uh, it's a balancing act. And what I tell everybody, man, if I if I can't put my if I can't put two fingers on each side of my pants. Now, these don't count because these are gym pants. But my typical pants that I wear when I'm doing business stuff, if I can't put a finger, two fingers on this side and that side, I'm getting too fat. So when that happens, what I do, I go to a uh, tuna, tuna salad and water diet and just drink water and eat a bunch of tuna. Just drink water and eat a bunch of tuna. And I mean, that's that's one of the things I can do when I need to uh, when I need to recover. Yeah. Mike says buy bigger pants. That's not that's never an option because see, then what happens? That's the slippery slope. It's like, OK, well, you know, I went from see optimally. 32. Now, if I was a 32 right now, that would look, I would look too lean. Optimally, I'd probably be a 34, which I think would be good in U.S. size. Right now, I'm a 36, but I've maintained 36 um, since college. Now, in college, at one point, I got really fat, and I went up to a 38, and that's when I realized, man, 38's too big. You know, when I started pushing that, I'm like, man, I gotta, you know, gotta, 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 gotta do something here. So, um, you know, with that being said, you know, I kept it at. Um, Kept it at 36, and, and that's my target. Mike says, I just lost 50 pounds over the last six months, mostly from hiking. Hey, Mike, hiking is an amazing workout. The best part about it is, is that, you know, you're getting, you're getting to see a bunch of cool views and you're, uh, you know, you're, you're motivated. When you hike out, you got to hike back. And it's different than a treadmill or something along those lines. Uh, fly right drones welcome aboard man welcome aboard good to have all y'all here um but yeah the uh 
yeah, hiking workouts are hard to beat. They're definitely tough to beat. I'm looking at this microphone here. One, two, one, two. Microphone, one, two, one, two. Yeah, it doesn't really, it shows that it's picking up. Can, can y'all hear me okay? Is it sound, does it sound muffled? Do I need to change the uh, the audio levels or is it is it decent audio quality here? Um, let's see. Crystal, awesome. Yeah, well, I guess, see, typically I use the ATEM Mini Pro, and this is an ATEM Mini Pro. This is just the, uh, you know, I've got a, as you can see here, I've got this little, uh, well, it's a, it's actually a video capture card. So I got the video capture card running into USB-C into the laptop, and then from the video capture card, I've got a standard HDMI cable. So it gives me a little bit of mobility. And, and I'm going to work on this format. The uh, the audio is coming from, it's just a shotgun mic, actually a very affordable shotgun mic, Rode, Rode shotgun mic on my Sony Alpha camera. So, you know, that's that's how I'm getting the audio here. And it's uh, that's good y'all can hear me because we're going to feed some raccoons here in a minute, man. So you can see that sun setting. And, and when you see that sun setting, you know, the raccoons, the raccoons are getting hungry. So... We don't want hungry raccoons, man. Let's see. I'm going to sit this over here. I'm trying to work on this, on this configuration because I don't want to knock anything off when we feed the raccoons in a little bit. 8-8, eight, eight, Nick, 8, did you make up with GoPro yet? No, there's, there's no making up with GoPro. Um, I have written a snail mail letter, snail mail letter, letter to GoPro detailing my experience, expressing my disgust and reiterating that, you know, I'm, I've been a long-term go, not just GoPro user, but a huge, and in, in the scheme of the YouTube universe, probably not as huge as a lot of channels, but a significant GoPro influencer. I mean, I started with GoPro Hero 2 and, uh, and this is the, these, this is the thanks I get. This is the thanks I get. No, it's unacceptable. I mean, there's no reason that I should have not only one GoPro Hero 9 Black Fill, but a second GoPro Hero 9 Black Fill. That's unacceptable. That signals a quality control issue. But what makes it worse is that GoPro support is unwilling to resolve my issue. And I'll go as far as to say they're probably unable to resolve my issue because it's my perception that GoPro support is a completely different, it's completely isolated from the brand. I mean, there's no, in my mind, they've completely outsourced GoPro support. In my my opinion, again, these are my opinions. If if I'm wrong, GoPro, please correct me. And hey, and please fix my camera too, or replace it with a used and functional camera or replace it with a current model. I don't care. I'm not trying to get an upgrade here. I just want a functional GoPro camera. But I wrote the uh, the snail mail letter to GoPro corporate. And basically what I did, um, hold on one second here. Let's see. Yeah, we got a lot of people tuning in. I'm going to get y'all's comments here. I'm going to finish this GoPro rant. So basically what I did, I wrote uh, to GoPro Corporate, detailed the experience, explained how horribly unacceptable my customer service experience was. Also reinforced the fact that, hey, I'm, I'm not just a GoPro fly-by-nighter, picked up a GoPro, it didn't work, and I called support and I was mad. No, I've been using GoPro since GoPro Hero 2, which was a second version of the GoPro. I never got the GoPro Hero 1 because I didn't realize at the time what all you could do with a GoPro. So my level of frustration with GoPro is through the roof. And it's to the point now to where even if they do reply to my snail mail, even if GoPro does resolve my issue, provide me with a, with a fix for my GoPro Hero 9 Black, provide me with a working replacement for my GoPro Hero 9 Black. I don't care if it's a refurb, just something that works. Provide me with a newer GoPro model that may not be prone to all these bugs. Again, this is my second GoPro Hero 9 Black that failed, and that is absolutely unacceptable for any product. So yeah, it hasn't been resolved. Great question, and I'm, I'm mad. Uh, okay, so let's see what we got here. We got... Uh, We've got fly right drones. What a view. Appreciate that. Wait till you see the raccoons here in a minute. The raccoons are all over my mountain. Uh, Mike says, I'm actually shocked they didn't send a replacement unit. 
you know, I'm not. And the reason I'm not shocked the GoPro didn't send me a replacement unit yet is that it's very obvious that the support, GoPro support, is a completely di different entity. They have no, in my, these are my opinions, they have no sense of loyalty to the GoPro brand whatsoever. And that's reinforced by the fact that when I said, okay, well, you know, put me in touch with GoPro corporate, you know, put me in touch with uh, GoPro customer retention, put me in touch with a manager that can help. They couldn't put me in touch with anyone. And that is absolutely unacceptable. So I've, I've had it with GoPro, man. Um, Derek says, lots of YouTube use trail cam to record wildlife and cheaper than GoPro and remote connection. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Mike says, I like buying stuff on Amazon. Seems to never have an issue. They can resolve it. Yeah, speaking of Amazon, anything... And I, by the way, I love Amazon and and this it's not just because I'm an Amazon affiliate, Amazon associate, but I love Amazon because it is such a any sort of issue where I buy something. It's not exactly right. I've never been. I've never been felt like they're trying to avoid helping me every time I've dealt with Amazon customer service. And I've been using Amazon since a year or so after it came out, the prime service came out. So it's never been the customer is wrong. The perception that I've always gotten when I dealt with Amazon is that the customer is right and we're going to go above and beyond the call of duty. And that's always been the case. I've never had a sour experience with Amazon. One of the funniest experiences that I had with Amazon, this was a really weird one. Many years ago, I can't remember the brand. I, actually, I think it was a Panasonic, but it was a point and shoot camera. This is early. In, this, this was early in my YouTube days. So I ordered the the current iteration of whatever camera, I can't even remember the camera model. It was a point and shoot. It was before my channel was even, you know, somewhat large. So I received the camera from Amazon and I opened it, had the tags on. I pulled it out and I'm like, this feels flimsy. This feels, and I looked at it and I discovered that what had happened, the camera was not the model of the camera that I'd ordered. The camera was probably a few versions prior. So somehow or another, a camera that was not the current model got placed in a current model retail box with the with the hang tag on it. And uh, and of course, I discovered it within a within a few seconds. I'm like, something's off. And I'm like, oh, OK, yeah, that's what happened. So in that scenario, I didn't just ship it back to Amazon. I called Amazon. I said, hey, I said, this is a very weird one. I said, I ordered, you know, whatever camera it was. I think it was a Panasonic. Um and I said, I got it. I took it out of the box. It was obviously a returned item. I don't know if it was returned or if somehow got it into the retail box of the current model, but it also had the, the hang tag of the current model, but it was not the current model camera. And I said, I just want to let you know this before I send it back. And people are like, you know, what's going on here? Because either previous person that bought it tried to one up Amazon and returned an old camera or somehow between Amazon and the manufacturer, that camera was replaced with a with an older generation. But that was a weird one. But the reason I'm saying that, that was a testament to Amazon's beyond exceptional customer service. They didn't they didn't make me feel like a crook. They didn't grief me. You know, the customer was always right. You know, I was going out of my way to tell them what I was returning and that it was not what should be returned because that's what I received was an old model camera, but I wanted them to know ahead of that. No problems at all. They took care of it. No problems at all. Amazon's great to deal with. And I hope that never changes. Flyright Drone says, time for the DJI Osmo 3. Yeah, actually the Osmo 3 looks good, but you know what's, and maybe I'm wrong with this. You know, y'all tell me. But I've been looking at the Insta360 brand, and they released a new camera. It's called an X3. So it's not – historically, when these Insta360 cameras were out, when they first came out, it was more you wanted to film so that you could watch with VR goggles or move your phone around. It feels like you're in the environment. But I think the real win in today's world with a 360 camera such as the Insta360 X3 – would be the ability to have that camera filming, but then within post-production, go and have an actual camera angles to work with. Sure, if you're filming in 360, and, and I don't have one yet, I'm thinking about picking one up for the channel, 
But uh, from what I've researched, it seems like you're getting the ability to frame all to use multiple virtual cameras of sorts, but you're getting a little, you know, slightly degraded quality. So if you were using a dedicated action camera, you're probably going to get a little bit better quality than you would with the uh, 360 that, you know, you're, you've edited and you've, you've figured out which camera angle to use within the, you know, the 16 by nine aspect ratio uh, video that you publish, but it's piqued my interest to say the least. So, yeah, both the DJI and then also that Insta360 are on my list. And Nick says, coming November 22nd, DJI Pocket 3. Yeah, the DJI Pocket was good. Yeah, Osmo 3 looks nice. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, some, uh, there's some things to choose from. Speaking of things to choose from, let's see what we've got for uh george cooney the raccoon let me uh let me see if he's available george cooney hey george cooney we've got some food for you sir yeah george cooney i think as soon as i get let me go get his food i'll be right back Yeah, now if this doesn't get a raccoon excited, I don't know what will. I got some leftover hot dogs, some leftover apples, some leftover cake, some leftover uh, mandarin oranges, some leftover crackers. So let's see. Let's go ahead. Um, let's get this over to George Cooney here. Okay, so George Cooney. George Cooney, sir. Comes your food. <laughs> I heard I heard one of them run, man. They're down there waiting. Let's uh let's flip this camera over here to the uh to the raccoon area, man. Let's take it off the tripod. Let's go ahead and get this sucker down there. Take this to the raccoon area. Yes, sir. Hey there, there he is. <laughs> is that George? Where is that? Yeah, let's see. Please announce yourself, sir. You're on YouTube live stream right now. See, he's sitting there chowing down. I don't know if he's eating a hot dog or the or the what. Let's see. There ought to be some more coming out. I think that's George Cooney. Yeah, that's George Cooney. No, actually, it's not. You can see the brown spot on his neck. One of these raccoons. Now, that's not the biggest raccoon, but here, okay, here comes another one. Check it out. That's George Cooney that you see now. Yeah, he's he's the friendly one. See, now watch this. Yeah, that's George Cooney in the solar light. Hey, George Cooney, what's up? You got viewers here. They may send you a super chat. So he's sitting there eating. He's like, yeah, man, I like this solar light. But see, this other raccoon, they don't know his name. He's just, he's just not friendly. He's just sitting there. He's like, man, what's up? But you got George Cooney over here. See, he even eats with personality. He's like, I'm the king. I'm the king of all raccoons. See, there he is. He's looking up. He's like, hey, I'm on YouTube, man. YouTube.com forward slash Irix guy. Yep. He's chowing down. He's enjoying his dinner. How do you like those hot dogs? 
may have some tacos in a little bit doing some tacos on the Blackstone. But my wife and daughter are pretty hungry, so probably won't be that many tacos left. So enjoy it while y'all got it, guys. Y'all got a bunch of good stuff down there. Let's see. We got some comments coming in here. I'm going to show y'all the uh, sunset view while I'll read y'all's comments here. Grr, too dark. Do you have a floodlight? Actually, I do have a floodlight. You know what I need? You know, it's a good point you just made. Let me get a spotlight here. I've got one of those O-lights, headlamps. Let me go get it. I'll be right back. Yeah, good suggestions. I got this headlamp right here. It's an O-Lite. These things are bright, man. Check this out. Whoa. Yeah, that's bright. Let's see how this looks. See, that's George Cooney by the light, and then this is the big mean raccoon. Yeah, see the... So, that's the mean raccoon over there. See, mean raccoon. And that's George Cooney in the grass. He said, yes, it is. Man, you're going to be well fed tonight, dude. Had a whole thing of food. There he is. Whoa. Yeah, I need to work on the lighting for these. Oh, I got a bunch of comments coming in. I'm gonna have to read y'all's comments here in a second. Let's let's see what George Cooney does here. He doesn't even care, man. He's like, you got the light on. He's like, you got people's tube. It's good. It's system to for managing my video doing live streams and it's just a group. I mean, where else can you go? This is next level. I do need to put the telephoto lens on here. I'm going to do that as part of a future enhancement. Uh, this is just a, a trial run. There he is. He's down there. Right there. Got to get accustomed to this situation. 30, 40 pounds. Sounds ridiculous, but. He's enormous. The enormous man. That camera because I keep getting a shadow. Let's sit this down here for a second, read some comments. Turn this headlamp off. <clears throat> yeah, I can uh, I could shoot out here if I want to when I want to. I don't do it at night because that's when the raccoons are out and I don't want to disturb them. Um, 
during the daytime, yeah. Bring He is right there. To get bugs in my beer, man. Yeah, this thing is. I mean, it's like actually, I use this on the Appalachian Trail, and it's it's got back. I'm gonna do some videos on it, but it's uh, yeah, it's good to have just a ton of uh, those here in a bit. <clears throat> this is cool, though, you know, coming through a uh, just a little. I'm gonna move this laptop off of the off of the black stone here. Let's see. Oh, that's funny when you look at the uh, at the black stone. The the text is backwards. Yeah, I just wanted to do uh, wanted to do a video of the of the rack, you know, more of a proof of concept because what I've got to do is wire up again the fiber optic HDMI. Once I do that, I'll have the studio, and then I've got A10 Mini Pro. So in that scenario, I can have chat uh, the live show chat on laptop on my mobile device and everything, and have multicam so I can go from studio to uh, Coon Live. <laughs> Two, two different cameras, so that ought to be um, be pretty cool. Man, it's bright out here tonight. Yeah, those uh, <laughs> raccoons are everywhere. Now, I've got, not only do I have raccoons, i got bobcats, I've got foxes, I've got groundhogs, uh, I've got a bunch of deer, um, haven't seen a cougar yet, although there is a cougar that's out there. It's part of a constant commitment. You know, I'm trying to find Bigfoot, trying to find Sas the Yeti. Haven't done that yet, but raccoons. But George Cooney is always friendly, and you know, he likes to interact. But the, the big one that you saw, I mean, there were only two raccoons tonight. I mean, he. That would be cool. I mean, ultimately, what I want to do, I want to put, uh, I'm going to create, because right now I'm just on a tripod. I've got my camera on the tripod. But I want to rig up without damaging the deck. Um, you know, just some tripod that has a, uh, well, obviously a tripod head on it. So basically what I can do is, you know, using a, using an arm, like a fluid head DO tripod, using that type of setup just be able to get out here and move it around and uh it's manual of course though, so i'd have to manually move it but if i put if i put that telephoto lens on at 100 to 400 millimeter uh sigma lens which is videoing and photo in the smoky mountains but um i could put that on and get some really cool stuff the only thing is when you're dealing with a lens like that, it's not as, uh, the aperture is not as low. So like this right here, I'm filming at F 2.8 with that one. I think it's F, uh, 0.8. So the low light's going to be a little bit degraded, which doesn't matter. I mean, like, you know, like I've always said with this channel, I mean, it's, it's about the content. It's not about the, uh, the perfect audio and the perfect video, although that does add to the production quality, you know, ultimately what this is about is, is a 
you know, whether it's a raccoon or, you know, going down into a <clears throat> unknown area in the Caribbean and filming videos. That's the thing, man. 2020. You don't even have to go into that, but it put a dent, a temporary dent in some of the adventures, man. I mean, it, you know, I was on a roll uh, there for a while. People don't see because it's just off the map. I don't want to say off the grid, but kind of off the beaten path type places. And, uh, you know, I've with all the travel constraints, you know, and that sort of thing. I think things are starting to normalize now. I haven't flown anywhere, but from what I hear, uh, the British Virgin Islands, I think they've they possibly eliminated all travel restrictions. And I think a lot of the other places are following suit. So I don't think it's going to be as difficult to get out and about as it would have been, you know, years. So, you know, that, that's one of the things I want to do for the channel. Now, I do have um, got a bunch of backpacking. Obviously, being in Appalachia, uh, something that I do like to do is a lot of backpacking. So I got some really cool backpacking adventures. Uh, some of some of them be going up uh, ho hopefully in the snow in, in January of 2023. So getting out and uh, backpacking at elevation below zero degrees and, uh, you know, filming those videos. Got to keep cameras warm. <laughs> you got to keep them warm so they don't so they don't fail. But that's that's going to be some adventure that are coming soon. Um, but yeah, just, just want to do this raccoon live stream. I know it's important. Gotta, gotta feed the raccoons, keep the raccoons happy. New format, just playing with, uh, you know, different, uh, different video ideas, different live stream ideas. So yeah, it's, uh. Pretty cool. I hate it. I didn't make it to uh, to New York. I was supposed to be in New York for uh, actually Archibald Chesterfield the third AC three. I was supposed to be in New York at uh, Peter Luger, the steakhouse in uh, is it Brooklyn or the Bronx? Is it the Bronx or Brooklyn? Anyway, Peter Luger. I was supposed to be up there for his birthday party, but uh, it just didn't you know it didn't work out. So. So as always, I wish the pontiff, Archibald Chesterfield III. But that would have been a cool trip. But again, with a lot of the a lot of the uh, studio stuff I'm doing, a lot of the uh, you know just the, the projects that I've that I've got going with uh, with this YouTube channel, it just it didn't fit into the uh, it didn't fit into the Irish Guys Adventure Channel schedule. So um, I, I regret not being able to make it there, though. The low tech for your needs. Another long time viewer of the channel. Tech for your needs. Uh, always good to have you. Good to have you here. So yeah, it's uh let's see. Trying to see what the temperature is. Uh, but you know, I am at elevation. That should pop up, and I don't think there's a connect connectivity issue. I'm 1.2 gig internet at this location, and was saying there was a connectivity problem. So maybe my wife put on some sort of streaming service, 1080 instead of 4K. So, hmm. this up because the other thing i want to set up for a lot of uh, obviously a lot of cooking live streams because that's kind of a cool way to uh, further interact with the audience you know doing the real-time cooks multicam uh, obviously a view and there are a lot of dropouts in the circle turning yeah i've Probably got some network congestion, man. I'm going to go check that out. I need to reboot. Um, actually, I love my my network. I run uh, Amazon Eero. It's been really good. The Eero, Eero 6 Plus. 
actually a lot of my devices, I kind of got to future proof it. And uh, a lot of my devices don't even, I, I actually, I don't ha think I have any devices support six plus Wi-Fi six plus, but um, <clears throat> and then I wired everything with cat eight, which is 40 gigabits per second, which is future proofed uh, from a cabling perspective. So, But anyway, I appreciate y'all tuning in. I hope y'all enjoy tunes. Uh, stay tuned for a lot more. I don't know what I got to do to perfect this. Um, obviously, this was a this was a live test. This isn't the the cool format like my production live streams are going to be. But uh, appreciate y'all tuning in. Y'all have a good one and uh, be safe.